How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs and today I want to dive deep and look under the hood of outlets that are tamper resistant. Pretty much throughout the United States and into Canada now, it's required by the NEC or National Electrical Code to install tamper resistant outlet in pretty much all applications since 2008. Now different states and regions adopt the standard at different paces, so it might not have been until recently that you have to install tamper resistant for outlets on any new builds, on any additions, or any electrical work that you're doing throughout your house. Now I do get it that this was based on safety, so really children's safety, and trying to reduce the chances of them introducing an object into an outlet and getting shocked. But if you're a grown man or woman and you're putting on a new addition or doing some electrical work and you're pulling permits and you need to pass uh, by an inspection and you don't love that you have to put these tamper resistant outlets in your home, I get that side of it too. It's additional costs and additional complexity which can lead to failures on these outlets. So let's dive in and not only look at just this overall outside, but I did tear into it and take a little hacksaw, pop out, the cover here and we'll actually see the feature itself and how it works in addition to comparing that to a tamper and weather resist outlet which can be required in your area for damp or wet areas. So let's take a closer look. So historically we would have the standard outlets and the issue was small children could introduce something into the hot side here and then get shocked, injured, and even uh, possibly killed. So it was not without precedence children were getting injured and usually the fix for that was was these type of covers that you put over your outlet to protect uh, your small child from messing with the outlets the problem is you'd have to remove those to plug something in uh, or did you install those throughout your entire house so the variability in the actual application of these was wide ranging so NEC wanted to take a little bit more control and introduce an outlet that had the features that if you introduce something into one side here that you could not pass the shutters. So you could not get to the contacts and as such you couldn't get injured. So internally, what does that look like? Looking at this Eaton 15 amp tamper resistant outlet, this is about a dollar at Lowe's you might be able to get it a little bit cheaper, and this is the lowest end you can get. So you do wanna consider for your home, one, do you want 20 amp outlets or receptacles, and two, do you wanna go with the higher grade commercial? I do have a video that goes through the differences between Leviton, commercial and residential, and that link is right here if you're interested in that. But when we look at the tamper resistant feature, it's really built all into the white housing here. Not much is different on the blue housing contacts in the base. And what that is, so if we look at the additional components that are added, it's really these shutters. So there's two different shutters and a spring in the middle. And I'll actually pop that out and show it to you. But first I just wanna show you the feature. And that feature is you can't put one side in and try to plug it. It won't pass because you have to push both shutters out of the way. So if you put both sides in, the plug can pass and connect with the contacts and power your plug. All right, so let's take a look underneath the hood here. Pop that guy out and see what that is actually doing. So you have two shutters here that are spring loaded to push out. So a plug would come in from this direction and then with this sloped shape, when you push it in, it also pushes the shutters out on each side and then you can pass two layers of shutters. Why does it not work on one side? Because you're just, on the one side, you're just gonna push past one and you're gonna hit this back side. So make sure that's in focus for you guys. So you're gonna push this one out, the top one's gonna to go out, but the back side's not gonna move because nothing is being introduced on this side. So that's really the whole feature, right? Is you gotta push both of those out to then pass the plug. Now you can also see how having these additional moving pieces, having that small spring, this can cause additional failures over time, and that's really the beef that some people have is 
if they're not getting the the safety feature right they don't have small kids running around the house so it's not important to them uh, now this just costs them more and introduces more failure points the challenge is remember it's not just about you if you sell that condo sell that house in the future how do you know who's going to live there next so it is nice to have these to protect uh, the future owners of that same property now the question is there is a tamper and weather resistant plug as well. I, to be honest, I was thinking there was gonna be additional sealing within the plug itself, just from a high level, that if these are put in wet or damp areas, that there's gonna be additional sealing that moisture couldn't get in the actual outlet or receptacle. I was wrong. It's still the same tamper resistant shutter design, exactly the same. And really the only difference that I see, and if you if you guys are uh, experienced, if you're a licensed electrician and you know any different, please jump down in the comments and let me know. But really it's the bracket itself here and then the mounting screws and that they are stainless steel so they're more resistant to corrosion. And that really drives about three additional dollars. So $1 for this guy, $4 for this guy. So you're gonna pay a premium for the stainless steel feature and corrosion resistance. So hopefully now you have a better understanding of the tamper resistant feature and then also this tamper and weather resistant outlet and what makes it weather resistant. Do you want to hear from you guys? So if you have any questions, jump down in the comments, put it there. I'm in there on a daily basis and also experience. If you have different experience or something I miss, I do value that. So jump down in the comments, let me know, and I always appreciate to get feedback from the viewers. Now before you take off, don't forget to hit that like button if you found this video helpful, and also subscribe to our channel as we have weekly videos coming out to help you with your repairs around the house, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.